The smallest organisms on our planet are also our oldest and most abundant type of life forms. These weird rocky blobs in the shallows of Lake Clifton, just south of Perth, are made by bacteria. These mounds are called thrombolites on account of their clotted structure and they're built up over centuries by colonies of microscopic bacterial cells. Now, although these colonies are rare, by most definitions, bacteria are the dominant form of life on our planet. On every surface, across every landscape, you find bacteria. And in fact, numerically speaking, then there are more bacteria living on and inside my body than there are human cells. Bacteria come in many shapes and forms and are not actually animals or plants, instead sitting in their own unique taxonomic kingdom. Compared to the cells we're made of, bacteria are structurally much simpler and far, far smaller. Bacteria are typically around two microns in size. That's two millionths of a metre which is very hard to picture, but it means that you could fit around half a million of them on the head of a pin. Or, to look at it another way, if I took a single bacterium and scaled it up to the size of this coin, then I would be 25 kilometres high. Bacterial-type organisms were the first life on Earth, and they've dominated our planet ever since. Excluding viruses, which by most definitions are not alive, bacteria are the smallest free-living life forms we know of. But what ultimately puts the limit on the smallest size of life? Single-cell life needs to be big enough to accommodate all the molecular machinery of life. And that size ultimately depends on the basic laws of physics. It depends on the size of molecules, which depends on the size of atoms, which depends on fundamental properties of the universe, like the strength of the force of electromagnetism and the mass of an electron. And when you do those calculations, you find out that the minimum size of a free-living organism should be around 200 nanometers, which is about 200 billionths of a metre. And that should be universal. It shouldn't only apply to life on Earth, but it should apply to any carbon-based life anywhere in the universe, because it depends on fundamental properties of the universe.